Colin Farrell's transformation into the Penguin caught everyone by surprise, even his co-stars in The Batman. He spent hours in the makeup chair and so much more. Here's how he made that intense transformation. If you went into The Batman without knowing anything about the film, you'd probably be surprised to learn that Colin Farrell is actually in it. In The Batman, Farrell plays just one of multiple antagonists going up against the Batman who's only been on the job for two years. That's when a mysterious figure called the Riddler begins leaving dead bodies around town with messages for the caped crusader. Farrell's depiction of Oswald Cobblepot or the Penguin is already earning praise from critics and fans alike, and Warner Brothers has thrown their support behind the performance by announcing a Penguin-centered spin-off series for HBO Max. Whoa, take it easy, sweetheart. That seems like a sure sign that Farrell's Penguin role is only getting bigger from here on out. But what did it take for Farrell to make such a striking transformation? A whole lot, it turns out. In an interview with Total Film, Colin Farrell said that there was always going to be more to his portrayal of the character than the sheer physicality, although it took finally seeing the full prosthetic getup to hammer home who the Penguin was. He said, I knew where I was going with that, but I wasn't fully comfortable until I saw the makeup. When I saw the makeup, it just all became really, really clear. Before that, Farrell's preparation had mostly involved finding the psychology of the Penguin. In The Batman, Cobblepot isn't as high on the criminal hierarchy as he's often depicted in the comics. Farrell explained to Total Film that he really tried to examine where the character is during the movie and the journey to full-fledged Batman villain that he still has ahead of him. Every discussion until I saw what Mike Marino, the makeup artist, had designed was considering the character's psychology and where he was at this stage of his criminal career. The makeup and prosthetics involved proved transformational on such a level that even the most die-hard Farrell fans barely recognized him when the first trailer for the Batman was released. Farrell has publicly praised the work of these artists for helping define the character so clearly, for audiences as well as for himself as an actor. You know, I could see the history on this man's face, I could see what a hard life he'd had, and, uh, and just behavior and, and mannerisms just were instantly informed. Under such heavy prosthetics and makeup, it should come as no surprise that Colin Farrell's Penguin took hours to prepare, despite the on-screen character having a relatively simple costume compared to everyone else in the movie. Farrell explained to Total Film, Someone was there that had molded the teeth. Someone was there that had done the hair. Mike and his team were there. Three or four of them were applying different pieces because it's six or eight different individual prosthetic pieces. And once it all went on, honest to God, it overtook me, as I think it would most people. Another drastic change to Colin Farrell's look is his size. The Irish-born actor has bulked up for films like Total Recall, but he put on the extra pounds in a very different way for the Batman. The weight, however, was a happy accident. Farrell had just filmed the miniseries The North Water, a role for which he intentionally packed on some extra pounds. When he met with Matt Reeves for The Batman, Reeves loved the look. As Farrell described the meeting to Total Film, Matt was like, oh yeah, I love it, I think that's Oz. And I was like, nah man, let's have a thin Oz because I'm not feeling great now. I have to lose this weight. There's no way I was keeping it on, man. In the end, they compromised. Colin Farrell got to lose the extra weight, while Reeves got his Oz through pounds of prosthetics that took four hours to apply before each shooting day. The end result of the transformation was so convincing that even some of his co-stars failed to recognize him. Jeffrey Wright walked by me and I said, I said, good morning, man. Uh, and he looked at me like he wanted me thrown off the set. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more videos about your favorite movies are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.